Alright. Alright, here we go. So you go. Alright, so Vinny, um how what, how did you get started in MMA and all fighting and stuff? Well basically, um I've been wrestling since I was like in second grade and um you know, I I didn't I didn't go to like college or anything after high school and so having all that wrestling experience, you know, there's no NFL, NBA, MLB for us. Um, and uh, I, I became a fan of the UFC. Um, and I, I just often talked about maybe getting into it, giving it a shot. And then uh, one day my mom was like, you know, why don't you just do it? Just just go sign up at a gym. So your mom Yeah, the my mom. Oh, it's... Usually and when I tell people that, they're like, they can't believe it. Yeah, right? usually, yeah. usually parents, especially yeah, mothers, are the ones saying, don't do it. Exactly. Right? But yeah, she, she told me, she said, you know, let's... Give it a shot, see what happens. So, you know, shortly after that, I signed up my first MMA gym. And, uh, got you started. went straight into MMA. You didn't start like just like focusing on kickboxing or jujitsu or anything. Like that. Well, actually, um, being like a wrestler, like it, it helped it. You know, with the jujitsu, translated really well. But the first gym I signed up at, they offered jujitsu and Muay Thai. Um, I actually did have a Muay Thai fight before I ever fought MMA, so that was like my first type of fight. No, you know, no, no boxing, boxing experience or anything. Um, I wound up losing that one, but um, you know, I, regardless, I had fun. I mean, I couldn't wait to do it again. How far out was that? Like, how long did you train for that? For the the, the Muay Thai fight, it couldn't have been long because within like seven months of signing up at my at the gym. I took my first MMA fight. Wow! So that is that is lightning. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I lost that one too, but you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> so how long have you been at this gym? This gym, well, this is um, Tiago just opened this up. I want to say like two summers ago, so it's relatively new. Like uh, I met him over at the UFC gym in Springfield. I want to say probably about it's got to be like three, four years now or something like that. So like I signed up there because like. When I turned 21, I kind of took a uh, a little bit of a break, and um, just needed somewhere to get you know get started again. And uh, that was the UFC gym. That's where I met Tiago. So I guess if you were mentioning earlier that you have you're like really trying out the like the amateur ranks first and kind of developing yourself and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of guys in MMA, it seems like they don't do that. Mm -hmm. And I think at least it seems like it's either. Either they are phenoms and they do really well in the professional life, or they just bottom out. It's so the truth, yeah. what now? Like, was that a conscious decision on your end to go through the amateur ranks and then eventually go into the professional realm? Or what's yeah, your, absolutely. Your I mean, um, I, I never wanted to just just dive right in, like you said. Like some guys do, they get you know so anxious to just be able to say, "Hey, I'm a pro." But like, no, not me. I just I wanted to take my time, really you know, build myself up. I wanted to be comfortable. I wanted to know that, you know, I could handle that level, you know, because from, at, like, you get all these amateur guys and there there's a lot of them that are just here to say, hey, I'm a fighter, you know, it's, they just want the title, you know, you know but like, then when you jump to pro, those guys, they want to be there, yeah. you know, there's no messing around. This is, it's their life, you know, some, most of them probably their livelihood, you know, so. Yeah. Speaking of that, is this like all you do as a fighter or do you have like a side job? Or no, I mean, fighting, I don't even look at it as a job or anything. It's I have a full-time job. I work uh, in Doylestown for my uncle. I do insulation and waterproofing and uh, fighting is just my passion, man. I just do it like when I can, really. You know, there's times where I don't get the train as much as I probably should, but you know, I, you know, I get it done. <laughs> Very good. So, and you currently, so you're fighting at lightweight, right? Yeah. And then you, I guess, have you ever fought at uh, featherweight before, or? No, I haven't been at 145 pounds since like 12th grade. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> yeah. Okay, that so, sounds. So what do you? So what do you walk around at? I walk around like 170. I won't. Okay. I won't let myself get heavier than that. Okay. Yeah, so. Gotcha. What? So what's like out of curiosity? Because we hear about weight cutting in like MMA at the at like the professional level and so on, but it affects everybody, right? Yeah. Um, What's your opinion of like, uh, like, I like guess multiple weight classes, like doing like 155, 165, instead of that jump from like, you know, where you've got 10 pound jumps to just 15 pound jumps, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. what do you think of? I mean, like, like kind of like high school wrestling, they have, you know, a weight class every, you know, couple, like five, whatever, seven pounds. I'm not opposed to it, you know, but uh, I wouldn't go to, I, I, I feel fine cutting from 170, 155, you know, I know guys that 
cut a lot more than that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I guess you could say I'm kind of fighting at my natural weight. Right. You know, because I don't feel drained. I still feel strong. And, right. And, and my speed's still there. So, right. I mean, I'm not opposed to adding more weight classes, but I think 155 is my home. Okay. For good. Very good. <laughs> so, in terms of your, like, career trajectory, like, where do you see yourself sort of going, like, from here? You know, what's your... I guess if we were to put it in these terms, like what would be your ultimate goal? Like where would you be super happy in terms of looking at your career? You know, once maybe you know. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind making the same money as Conor McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, I'm I'm real about it. Uh, I just like I said, I do this because I love it, uh, and I'm just gonna take it as far as I can. Okay. You know, I'm sure there will be a, a day where it's like I have to choose between you know working and training or what. But like when that day comes. Then, you know, then I'll make that decision, but I'm just going to take it as far as I can go. Right. Yeah. Very cool. Have you met any, like, local fighters? Or? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm tight with a lot of guys, and I've been to a ton of different rooms, got a ton of work with a lot of the top, like, amateurs, you know, like, uh, I don't know if you guys know Joe Pfeiffer. And, yeah, you know that documentary you put on. Yeah, he's, like, oh, he's, he's, that's, he's... That's a story right there. Absolutely. <laughs> he's a good dude, and then, uh, I mean... The guys that I'm training with at uh, Royal Striking, you got guys like Eugene, you know, I've trained guys with Ryan Cafaro, and just, you know, a lot of the top dudes around the area, so it's cool. I saw that you uh, met Frankie Edgar. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah very, very briefly. He was, um, he was at uh, one of the, the fights. Uh, actually, when I, my first fight back after uh, my little break, he was there, and I've been a fan of him for like forever. So you know, I had to get that picture. But I mean, I've never trained with him. I've never had words with him or anything. But it was definitely cool to meet him. Very cool. Yeah, yeah I used to know. I actually used to train uh, like about a year and some ago with his old coaches that he started with at Philadelphia Fight Factory. Oh, yeah. So it's like weird hearing their stories where he's like, "Okay, I remember Frankie was the dude around the block." It's like yeah. what? Like, exactly. um, but yeah. So in terms of your like, um, so obviously you have like a grappling heavy like background oh, in terms yeah. of so like when. When it comes to like uh, actually like fighting in the cage and everything like that, do you like in terms of your style? Would you call yourself like a specialist? Like we see people like Habib Nurmagomedov, where he's like this grappling specialist, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and then we see people like let's say uh, Conor McGregor or like a Tony. Fer well, not even a Tony Ferguson, but yeah. like his striking is very good. Yeah, like right? an Anderson oh, Silva. Right, Anderson Silva. So, yeah. There you go. So uh, right, that's a much better example. Yeah. So like. <laughs> um, would you consider yourself like more of a freestyle fighter where you kind of incorporate everything or are you, you know? I believe, I believe so. I think um, originally I probably would have said, you know, uh, specialist, like, like wrestling, like grappling heavily. Like, honestly, I don't, whenever I spar MMA, sparring anything, I try not to, to use my wrestling. I really try to, 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 you know, stay out of my comfort zone because, you know, if I'm just constantly using my wrestling is like, you know, it's just it's not gonna make me a better fighter so I'll take my lump standing up just just in order to get better and uh, I, I try to focus on my hands a lot more than anything and when you're training do you do like a lot of hard sparring or just like a lot of pad work or uh I just as far as um hard sparring I just usually you know give what I get uh, <laughs> but um, yeah I'd, I'd say probably mostly pad work uh, um, most of my camp is spent over at like Royal Striking when I do do fights, and uh, those practices are usually like on the pads. So, do you have like favorite MMA fighter or anything like that? I don't really have a favorite MMA fighter. It's more of just like I have guys that I don't like. <laughs> it's like it's like I I respect and I I like all the all the fighters, but I mean then there's like a few where it's like I really don't care for. <laughs> What about McGregor? Nah, nah, not a McGregor. Fan. <laughs> so then I'm going to jump in now because I'm like super interested in this like latest build up, right? Because mm -hmm. with Connor fights, it always seems like he has this sort of like build up in the way that he, each opponent, there's like a new level he's going to, right? Yeah. And with his latest opponent, it was almost as though he didn't quite understand the type of person he was dealing with mm -hmm. and the type of group of people he was dealing with and where they came from and how serious they take things. So like, based on like the way that I, I don't know if in the amateur ranks trash talk really exists in the same way I know like with the professional stuff it does. people are trying it, do, it does exist <laughs> oh, it does. I, I think it's I think it's stupid but it does yeah, I try to tell it's just like regional amateur MMA like mm. you know, let's 
It also see. seems hard because like you don't really know the people as well. Like they're exactly. not famous, yeah. and you can't be like, "Oh, I know this about you, and I yeah. can go on that." Well, but you would like, be surprised because like usually on like this like circuit, like you hear things, and people have trained with each other, you know, a decent amount. So you do hear and know things about certain people. Like I, you know, I'll never get into that stuff because that's just not the type of person I am. Yeah. But I've seen guys just constantly jawing on like Facebook. So <laughs> just calm down. Right. Man. So, <laughs> so out of curiosity then, how was your view of like what happened with, with between Connor and the whole Dolly thing and just even afterwards at the, you know, after the fight and everything? As far as afterwards, I mean, I just got to kind of think like, you know, you got what you asked for, man. Like you, you, you crossed some lines and and I get that's Connor's whole thing. And it may, like you said, like he didn't know who you, like the type of people he was dealing with. It may have just been like business for Connor. And, um, you know, he, he may have just been hyping up the fight, but to, to Khabib, it wasn't, it was more than that, you know? It was, um, so I, I think, I think uh, you, you, gotta, you gotta watch who you're talking to, you know? And you, you can't, you can't, like glamorize the dolly through the bus and then like you know crucify you know could be for hopping over the it's you, you can't do that I'm, I'm i'm american i'm all for like free speech but at some point you know you as ufc is an organization they might want to draw a line when it comes to you know what you're saying because you then you get incidents like that you know i mean I, again it's hard for me to want to like dictate what you can and can't say but you know try and conduct yourself you know, so you don't look like a dick. Yeah. <laughs> Try to act professional. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's tough when you're when you're like literal like money in your pocket is connected to how much trash you talk. I agree. You know? I, oh, I agree. You know, like he's where he is because of the things he said, but he said it to the wrong person this time, and Absolutely. it backfired. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, mean, out of curiosity, uh, when do you think when do you think that you're or like when do you think the next time you'll be in the cage or like when, you know? Well, I mean, it was supposed to be a couple of weeks from now, um, November 3rd, that uh, fell through. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm looking probably February, you know, after, you know, the holidays and everything. You know, I just, I was pretty active this past year, you know, a couple, you know, more than a couple Muay Thai fights and jujitsu matches. And my last MMA fight was in March. So, you know, I've, I've been pretty active, I think. Uh, you know, I just want to let myself heal physically, mentally, and you know, get ready. Hopefully, February for a pro debut or something. Okay. So, yeah. Very cool. <laughs> is there anywhere that they that people can reach you, or do you use Twitter? Do you use like? Different... Actually, I'm not on Twitter, but like Facebook, I'm under my name Vinny Orstaglio. Instagram, I'm under my name Vinny okay. Orstaglio, and you know, I, that's where I do most of my promoting. So. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Dom, if you have any other questions. Uh, do you want to? Plug anything, anyone, any of your gyms or? Uh, yeah, HOA BJJ, you know, and uh, Royal Striking. Yeah. There he is. Cool. Yeah. All right. I was just running out of 